Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to create tumbling window triggers to execute the pipelines and also will create dependencies between them. You may remember from our triggers lesson that tumbling window triggers are mainly used in cases where we are dealing with slices of data. In this example, we don't have slices of data because ECDC exposes all of the data at once, but we'll still make use of it to exploit the benefits of being able to create dependencies and triggers. So let's switch over to the data factory, and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, here we are in the data factory. Let's try and understand the pipelines we got here, before we try and create the triggers. So we dealt with the population pipelines in the last lesson, so we want to deal with the ECDC data in this session. So for ECDC, we got this ingestion data which copies all the files we need from GitHub website into our data lake. And then we process them using separate pipelines. So we got the case and death hospital admissions and testing within the process. We got the transformation here and then we got the splice here. So we got seven different pipelines. So what we can do is we can create a trigger to process the ingestion of the ECDC data first. And then we can create three separate triggers for the process and then make them all dependent on the ingestion trigger so they follow the ingestion. And then we can create three separate triggers for the splice. And these three could be dependent on the corresponding transformation pipeline triggers. So that's what we can do. We don't need to do all of them. It'll be overkill in this lesson. We will exclude the testing data. So let's exclude that one. So we can create five triggers. We can create one for this and two for the hospital admissions and cases and two for the splice. So let's start doing that. I'm going to do the first one for the ingestion of the ECDC data. Let's switch to the Manage tab and create the trigger. So if you remember, we got the ingest ECDC data trigger already here, which was a scheduled trigger that we created early in one of our modules. So let's delete that one. We don't need it because we are going to create a tumbling window trigger for that. So let's do that and we need to publish it because otherwise Data Factory wouldn't let you create another one with the same name. So I'm going to create a trigger with the same name and that's going to be called TR and just ECDC data. But this is going to be a tumbling window trigger rather than a scheduled trigger. So let's get the start date. Let's do yesterday's date and I'm going to start at midnight. So the idea is that it's going to run every day at midnight and then the each of the other triggers will follow this one. So that's going to be at midnight. So it's going to run every day at midnight. So we got to change it to 24 hours so that it runs every 24 hours, which is daily. We don't need to do anything in the advanced. We need to do that for the other triggers, but not for this one. Let's click checkbox start trigger on creation as well. So let's create the next trigger that is going to be for the process cases and deaths. So I'm going to call that one as TR process cases and deaths data. And this is going to be a tumbling window trigger. Again, it'll start from yesterday at midnight and, and it'll run every 24 hours as well. But the difference here is we are going to make this one dependent on the previous one. So if you click on advanced and then you can click new on the add dependencies and then you can pick the TR and just ECDC data. We don't need to set any offsets. I'll walk you through how these ones works at the end of this lesson. But at the moment, we want this to be dependent, sorry, this new trigger to be dependent on the ingestion trigger running at the same time. So today's trigger has to be dependent on today's ingestion trigger. So we don't need any delays. I may as well just explain, if you want to run your trigger at 8 o'clock every day rather than the midnight you can start the trigger to come in at mid midnight. But then if you put 8 a.m. sorry, 8 hours it'll run at 8 o'clock for us, actually, we can run it at midnight and get the files from ECDC and let's click start trigger on creation and that's done. So let's do the next process as well, which is going to be the process hospital admissions data. Okay, 
So we've created the two transformation triggers and made them both dependent on the ingestion trigger. Now we need to do the SQL triggers. So I'm gonna do the one for the process cases and sorry, SQL cases and deaths data. So that would be TR SQL cases and deaths data. And let's make it run at midnight as well on yesterday's date and make it run every 24 hours similar to what we did on the others. And now we are going to make this dependent on the process cases and deaths trigger and we just need to activate that. That's okay, done. And let's create the new one for the hospital admission slicer as well. Okay, I've created the other trigger as well. So we got the five triggers we talked about. So that's done now. And let's switch to the pipelines and attach the pipelines to the triggers. So this is the ingest ECDC data. Let's add the trigger and that will be the TR ECDC ingest data. So that's exactly what we created there. And then click OK and click OK. So what it says is make sure the publish for the trigger to be activated after clicking OK. So we just need to publish the trigger before it can be activated. And let's do the other four triggers as well in the same way. Let's attach them. Okay. I've attached the other four pipelines to the triggers as well. And let's click on publish now. And it's got five new triggers created. So let's just click publish and it should publish the triggers and the pipelines will be running as well. Okay, let's now switch the monitor and then we can have a look at what's happening. So as we can see, the ingestions finished very quickly so that didn't take much time. That's taken all the data from GitHub for ECDC and put it into our data lake. So let's have a look. As you can see here, all the pipelines is now completed. So we got the ingest ECDC data sequelized for both of them, hospital admissions and the cases and deaths. And the two processes have finished as well. What you can do is you can look at the window start time. So the one we started was from last night. So we got the window start time and let's put the window in time as well. So as you can see here, this is the one from 21 to 22nd. So if I come back and look tomorrow after the midnight, I'll have the slice from from 21 to 22nd. So it'll run every morning at midnight and it'll process the data and the dependencies are as we specified. I hope that's given you an understanding of how the tumbling window triggers can be used to create dependencies. Before we finish, I would like to walk you through a couple of options within the tumbling window trigger that we discussed previously. So let's get back to the triggers tab and then you can pick the process cases and deaths. And here, we gave the dependency as the ingest ECDC data but we left the offset at zero and window size is zero. So the offset and the window size basically lets you choose which window you want the trigger to be dependent on. In this case, we wanted our trigger to process the cases and that data for today to be dependent on today's ingestion data. So we didn't want to do any offset, but for example, you may want to process yesterday's data today and today's data tomorrow. So you ingest the data yesterday, throughout the day, and then you might want to pick the data at midnight on the following day. In that case, you would specify the offset as minus one. So there is a documentation within Microsoft site with a couple of diagrams that might be easier to understand. So this was our example. So we wanted our current slice to be dependent on the other triggers current slice. So this is, this is based on hours, but in our case it was based on days. So the 10 to 11 slice on the trigger A is dependent on the 10 to 11 slice on trigger B. But for example, you wanted all of this data to come through and then you start processing that in this slice. As an example here, a trigger is 10 to 11 to be dependent on trigger B's 9 to 10. You would create a dependency between them two, but you set the offset to be minus one hour. But in our case, if we wanted one day's delay, then we would set that to minus one day. 
Similarly, you can say, in my trigger, I want the 10 to 11, a 10 to 11 slice to be dependent on both 9 to 10 and 10 to 11 data to be available. In that case, you specify the offset to be minus 1 hour and the size to be 2 hours. So that means it's waiting for two slices. So if I switch back to our example, if you wanted the process to be dependent on ingest for one day and earlier, so you would say minus one here. And if you wanted two of the days to be dependent on that one, then you would specify two days there. So, so that's the meaning of offset and window size here. And I think we talked about all of these previously. So that's the end of this lesson and I'll see you in the next one.